Everyone, I've been looking into adding design tokens to the component library that I'm working on and have been using style dictionary to help with that process. In this video, I'm going to share with you what's possible using this tool and some of the neat things that I've discovered while working with it. Now, if you're not familiar with the concept of design tokens, they are essentially your design system decisions and specifications translated to code. Design tokens follow a specific format and have a draft spec currently being worked on by the W3C or the World Wide Web Consortium, which is a web standards governing body. This means that they will eventually have an official format approved by the W3C, which everyone can then follow and adhere to. Design tokens are usually stored in JSON files and are composed of a variety of different properties of your design system. Usually you'll have your core tokens, which is things like color, spacing, font size, breakpoints, and so on. And then you have semantic tokens, which is kind of like an additional abstraction layer on top of your core tokens. For example, you can have a color that's primary or secondary, and then those map to one of the existing core tokens. One of the biggest benefits of design tokens is they give you a design language that can then be shared between design and development. This allows you to take specs from a tool like Figma and then implement them in code using the same naming conventions and patterns. This gives you great consistency between your design and development teams and is extremely useful for something like a design system component library. But how exactly do we do that? How do we share this language? Well, this is where Style Dictionary comes into play. Style Dictionary is a tool that takes your design tokens and transforms them into assets that can then be consumed uh, in a variety of different platforms, such as web, iOS, Android, and so on. You can specify a variety of different formats uh, and apply all sorts of transformations to your tokens uh, before they get converted. For example, you can convert dimension values from pixels to rem uh, or colors from RGB to hex and all sorts of other neat stuff like that. So using this tool, we can take our design tokens, which adhere to the W3C format and turn them into CSS or any other supported format that can then be consumed in our application. So in this video, I'm going to show you what's possible using a very simple setup and some sample tokens. The beauty of this setup is that it scales very well and can be applied to a variety of different design systems and token structures. First, before we get started, let's take a closer look at what design tokens look like. A design token is essentially a collection of key value pairs which describe a specific design decision. So for instance, a design token in the official W3C format looks something like this. So we have the token name, uh, its value, and the type specified. There are different types of tokens, some of which we can see over here on the side. And these map to common properties that you would want to abstract into a token. So such as color, dimension, uh, which uh, represents values related to spacing and size, and are most often in either rem or pixel units. And then we have things like font family, which is where you specify your font faces, and things like font weight and so on. Now it's important to keep in mind that the spec is still in draft state as of the making of this video and it's actively being worked on. So some things may still change, but the things we'll be using today are pretty well defined at this point. When it comes to tools like Style Dictionary, it has been around longer than this official design token format. And as such, there may be minor differences in the token structure that uh, it expects. So with Style Dictionary in particular, the main difference is in the attribute keys where there's no dollar sign before the value and some of the other keys. Now, luckily there are complementary tools that help us bridge this gap and let us work with the official design token format. And one such tool is the style dictionary utils library, uh, which we'll be utilizing today. This library essentially lets us define our tokens in the official W3C design token format. Um, and it will take care of translating the tokens that we specify into a format that Style Dictionary understands. All right, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. First, we'll need to create a new node project. Let's go ahead and create a folder called Style Dictionary Tokens. And inside this folder, run npm init to bootstrap an empty node project. Next, we'll need to install Style Dictionary itself and the helper library Style Dictionary Utils. And lastly, let's add prettier to keep our code nice and clean. Inside our project, let's create a folder called tokens where we will store all of our design token files. 
We can categorize our token files in whatever way works best with our design system. One common convention that works well is to have a separate file for each type of token in your design system, uh, and then you denote them with the .tokens.json uh, at the end of the file name. So for example, let's create a file called color.tokens.json, and this file will contain all of our color design tokens. I'm going to add some sample color tokens in here. So you'll see we have violet and rose as our colors and then they have a type of color and each has a corresponding hex value. Let's save that. And let's also create another file called uh, spacing and define our spacing tokens in there. And let's add some sample spacing tokens. Uh, so this will define our small, medium, and large uh, spacing values. So you'll see this is of type dimension to match the W3C format. Um, and then the values are using pixel units um, in this case. And lastly, let's do another one to store all of our typography values. So we'll create one called typography.tokens.json and add some sample typography values. So in this case, you'll see we have font size and font weight in a single file. So um, for things like typography, you can mix them together. So really, it depends on how you want to structure your design system. All right, so that's a pretty good starting point to keep uh, things simple. Now let's look at how we'll use these with Style Dictionary. Now there are a few different ways of using Style Dictionary. You can use it as a CLI or as an NPM module, which is what we'll be doing here. Whatever method you choose though, at the core of it is the Style Dictionary configuration object, which is where we specify all the options for transforming our tokens. Now this configuration object can also be defined several ways. You can do it either as a separate JSON or JavaScript file, or you can pass the options directly in the code. Since we'll be using Style Dictionary as an NPM module, we'll define our configuration right in our code. So it would look something like this over here. So to run our Style Dictionary, let's create a new file called index.js under the source folder. And once we have it configured, we can simply run this file uh, as a regular NPM script. Now the basic usage of style dictionary looks something like this. So you'll see we import style dictionary itself uh, and then extend it using the provided configuration. And so you can do it either as an external configuration file like we have over here, or just by passing the configuration object directly, which looks something like this over here. Now this configuration object is what drives style dictionary. It tells it where to find our source token files, how to transform and format them, which platforms to build for, where to generate the output files, and so on. When it comes to transforming design tokens, Style Dictionary has the concept of transforms, which are essentially functions that modify a token in some specific way in order for it to be understood by a specific target platform. Now, transforms are isolated per platform, so each platform begins with the same design token and makes the modifications it needs without affecting other platforms. The order you use transforms matters because transforms are performed sequentially. So you need to be careful about that. Now there are several ways of specifying which transforms to apply. You can either specify each individual transform like we see over here, or you can use an entire transform group, which includes a curated collection of specific transforms. The style dictionary includes a number of predefined transforms and transform groups out of the box. Uh, so these cover a wide range of platforms and formats for many different use cases, and you can combine them in whichever way is needed for your usage. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is that you can only specify one or the other, not both at the same time. So if there's a transform group that you used, but then want to also apply an additional transform on top of it uh, that's not included in that group, uh, you'll have to define a custom group yourself to be able to do that. And that's another thing that uh, Style Dictionary lets you do. Now there are three main types of transforms. They are attribute, name, and value. And these perform a different type of transformation uh, for your tokens. Now additionally, you can find third-party libraries on GitHub which provide even more transforms. And if you want to get your hands real dirty, Style Dictionary lets you define your own custom transforms as well. The other important configuration option is the format of the output files. 
This is what lets you specify the expected format of the generated files uh, for the given platform. Similar to transforms, style dictionary includes a number of common predefined formats. So you'll see here we're using CSS and then that outputs our CSS variables into a CSS file. And speaking of platforms, uh, this is how you define your target environments and you need to have at least one platform defined uh, for style dictionary to run. Now, since we're using the style dictionary utils helper library, we'll need to use its instance of style dictionary instead, rather than importing the one from the main style dictionary package. So you'll see here, for example, we're importing style dictionary from style dictionary utils rather than style dictionary. Now, when we do this, the W3C token parser is included by default uh, so that we can use the W3C format in our tokens and have style dictionary understand it. Note as well that this library includes a number of additional formats that you can use. Um, we won't be utilizing them in our example today, but they are there if you'd like to utilize them. So back in our index file, let's go ahead and import style dictionary. And next let's define our config and specify the source of our tokens. So we can say source and this will look in the tokens folder and we wanted to pick up all the files that have tokens.json in their name. Next, we'll need to specify our platform. Uh, for this example, we'll stick with just CSS to keep things simple, but you can define multiple platforms if you desire. So we'll add the CSS platform, and here we'll specify the build path as our dist folder, and transform group will be CSS. So this will apply your standard CSS transforms to our tokens. And then the output files format will be CSS variables. And then destination is variables.css. So basically this will transform our design tokens into CSS variables, uh, put these CSS variables in this file, and then it will be in the dist folder. So with our basic configuration defined, all that's left to do is to extend style dictionary with this config and then we just need to build it. So we can say const sd style dictionary dot extend, and then we can pass it our config. Now you can simply say sd build all platforms, and this will run the style dictionary build using the platforms that we just specified. All right, now to run this file um, back in our package JSON, we'll need to add a script. So let's get rid of that and we'll say build and run node src index file. Now, since we're using ESM format, uh, we'll need to change our module type to uh, module. So we'll set type module and then we can get rid of that. All right, and now we just need to run it. So we'll say npm run build. And you'll see this ran our build and generated the variables file that we had specified. So we'll see in here under dist folder, we have our variables.css and here we have our tokens specified as CSS variables. All right, so you'll see color violet is the hex value of the violet token that we have here. And then the same thing for our spacing values and the font size and font weight and so on. All right, so now we have a single CSS file, including our design tokens as CSS variables. So now we can use this anywhere that can consume CSS. One of the really neat things with design tokens is they support aliasing, which let us refer to other tokens when defining new token values, allowing us to create complex relationships between the tokens. So this is very useful for creating semantic layers of abstractions, which utilize the core tokens. So for example, here you can see that we have a token group defined with the token name and value. And then with the alias, we can simply refer to this token by its name, and then it will use the value from the source token. For example, in our color tokens, we can create a primary and secondary color, which maps to one of the existing ones here. So if we add primary and secondary, and then for the value, rather than setting a specific hex color, we simply refer to color.violet and color.rose, which will use the values from the tokens that we have already defined here. 
And now if we run the build again, we'll see that these aliases get resolved to the core token values in the generated CSS file. All right, so now primary has the same color as violet and the same thing for secondary. Now you'll notice in the output CSS that the aliases were resolved with their core token values. Um, and that's great and all, but that means that our aliases only exist at the token source. So they exist only in the token definition files, uh, but they're lost in our generated assets. Well, turns out there's a way that we can make this even better. You see, there's an option in style dictionary that will allow us to retain the references in our output files, which means that style dictionary will then use the appropriate mechanism for a given format and it will establish those relationships so that we can maintain the, uh, the token aliases in our generated output files. So in the case of our CSS, the CSS variables themselves can act as the link between the token aliases. Now, one thing we need to keep in mind is that uh, this is not available for all formats, but in our case, uh, since we're using CSS, it's one of the supported formats for this, so we'll go ahead and enable it. So to enable this feature, back in our index file where we set our style dictionary options, under the platform's file uh, array, we'll need to add options and set output references to true. And so now if we run our build script again uh, and look at the CSS output, you'll see that secondary and primary are now using CSS variables rather than the hex values directly. This is incredible and it keeps the relationships that we established in our token files all through to the CSS uh, output. Another really cool thing that you can do is you can transform the dimension tokens from pixel to rem units using this custom transform that comes with style dictionary utils. So we can specify this to turn our spacing tokens from pixel units into rems. Now, one thing to keep in mind that I've mentioned before is if you want to specify specific transform, you can no longer use the transform group together with this option. So you'll have to specify all the transforms manually. Now, if we look at the predefined CSS transform group that we used before, you'll see it has all of these uh, transforms specified. Now, some of these, um, don't actually apply on our tokens because we're using the W3C format. So for example, if we look at size rem, this will look for category of size token attribute, which our tokens don't have, so this will actually have no effect. But we want to specify these first two for sure, as that will transform our token name into a format that uh, is appropriate for CSS variables. So let's go ahead and take those two and back in our index file, let's just comment out transform group. And instead we'll say transforms. So this will take an array of strings. So we'll do that. And then we'll need to add the one from style dictionary utils. So we'll take dimension pixel to rem and add that here. All right, and now if we run our build again, and look at the output. You'll see that now our font sizes are using rem values as well as the spacing tokens. So that's pretty neat. And you can also set the base font size. Um, so for example, you can pass the options here and set it to whatever value you want. 16 is the default, so uh, that's a pretty standard one. But if you need to modify that, you can do it that way. Another transformer I like is color RGBA which will take your hex color and transform it into the RGBA format. So if we go ahead and add this to our array here and run the build again, you'll see that now our color tokens are using the RGBA value instead of hex. Well, that about does it for this video. It's pretty neat what you can do with style dictionary with just a minimal setup. And we haven't even began to scratch the surface here. So there's lots more that's left to explore. Um, I'm going to keep experimenting with this myself. And hopefully this inspires you to check it out as well. But for now, that's all I've got. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.